Hi, my name is Dr. Chris Brill, and I'm a faculty member for the PhD program in Human Factor Psychology at Old Dominion University. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about human factors and how you could prepare yourself for doctoral study in human factors. You may not have heard of human factors before, but it's an area you should consider checking out. It's a very practical side of psychology, uh, and you can impact a lot of people's lives in a very positive way through human factors. In fact, you can save lives with human factors uh, while making a good income at the same time. So what is human factors? Human factors is the application of psychological principles to the design and use of technology. Essentially, we design technology for human use. We look at the abilities and limitations of humans, and we design technology around it. And in doing so, we make it safer to use, more user-friendly, so we're not so frustrated, uh, we can increase productivity and effectiveness, uh, and we can make it more pleasurable to use. Human factors can be applied to any number of different kinds of systems. Uh, any kind of technology really then involves humans. To give you a few examples, human factors is applied to medical systems. We design medical technology for doctors and nurses and, and even patients to use in home uh, so that it's uh, safer to use. We can actually design technology in such a way that people are less likely to make errors. That's a good thing uh, when you're dealing with medical technology. Um, we can also apply it to computer systems, any kind of software, smartphone interfaces. We want to make them more user-friendly. I can't count how many devices haven't succeeded in the marketplace because they weren't user-friendly. They didn't apply human factors in a smart way. We can uh, apply human factors to industrial technologies uh, to uh, make them safer to use in, in factory and manufacturing settings. We can apply it to um, gaming and simulation, using virtual environments uh, and uh, other kinds of uh, devices for uh, training people. We can use it for uh, military technologies to make our, our soldiers uh, safer and more effective. There are any number of applications of human factors. Really, as I said, anywhere technology and humans are present, we can apply human factors. There are traditionally three major paths that a human factor psychologist can take. Um, you can work in academia, government, or industry. And what you do varies widely based on which path you take and which organization you work for. In academia, you would generally work in a department of psychology or perhaps a department of industrial engineering. And um, you're working as a professor teaching courses, and conducting research. Uh, there's a big emphasis on funded research, so a large part of your responsibility would be writing proposals for research grants and then executing that research. If you are in government, there are a number of different agencies you could work for, and this includes um, the Department of Defense, um, such as an Army, um, Air Force, or Navy laboratory, uh, or uh, working for NASA, or an agency such as the uh, Department of Transportation. So what you would do varies widely based on which organization you're working for and what the goals of that organization are. If you're working for a Department of Defense lab, generally your work is a little more focused. Uh, you could be working in a very applied type of setting where you are developing technologies directly for the warfighter to help ensure their safety and assist their effectiveness. Um, you could also be conducting more basic uh, type of research to help support the overall mission and to kind of uh, work in a, almost like a, a pseudo academic type of position as a researcher to gain general knowledge that might be useful for uh, assisting the overall mission of whatever branch you're working for. 
If you're working for a government agency such as NASA, well, naturally you would be doing aerospace and, and uh, space research. And it could be designing um, new cockpit displays. It could be working on uh, developing the next generation airspace uh, and technologies uh, centered around that. Or it could be conducting studies on uh, human habitability and long duration space travel. It really depends on what needs uh, to be done and what the overall goals of the agency are at that time. If you're working for industry, uh, you might have a more varied type of experience, but it really depends on what uh, what organization you're working for. There are a number of agencies uh, and uh, companies that hire human factors uh, psychologists, including Whirlpool, Ford, Microsoft, Apple, um, John Deere, the uh, State Farm. There are numerous uh, companies that hire human factor psychologists. And what you do, again, depends on what the company does. It could be developing software interfaces. It could be working on smartphone technologies. You could be working on uh, consumer electronics, such as appliances. Uh, for a company like John Deere, you would be uh, helping to develop and study their um, commercial farming technologies. With John Deere, it's not as simple as hopping on a tractor and driving it. Their industrial farming technologies are actually highly complex with lots of displays and controls. They almost look like command centers. There are a lot of human factors issues uh, that are present and a lot of safety issues. Uh, so human factors are absolutely necessary um, for the safe operation of these systems. So traditionally, uh, people think that the industry jobs pay the best, and they probably do. The, the industry jobs generally pay very well, but you also might work the longest hours and also have a lot of travel. Uh, maybe that appeals to you. Um, government jobs uh, tend to pay fairly well, uh, particularly if you've been there for several years and you're a GS employee. Uh, GS stands for a general schedule, and these are uh, kind of your traditional government workers. And if you have a lot of uh, seniority, it's a fairly stable type of position. Um, if you're a contractor working for the Department of Defense, it's less stable. Um, you still can make good money, but um, people who work in contracting types of position, positions tend to float from organization to organization more. Uh, they don't have the same security. Uh, if you're working for academia, you're generally thought to have the lowest salary. And in some ways you might, it depends on the institution. Uh, but it's actually misleading. Uh, academics aren't paid quite as badly as you might think. The reason is uh, academic salaries are generally based on a nine or 10 month contract, meaning it's not truly an annual salary. It's a nine or 10 month salary. So if you do some consulting or teach during the summer um, or pay yourself on a research grant, you actually can make uh, a good amount more money and your salary can rival some um, government and industry positions. Um, any way you look at it though, human factors is generally the highest paying area of psychology. Uh, you can do quite well with a PhD in, in human factors. Um, I don't want to give specific salary ranges, uh, but it is the highest uh, paying area of psychology. The only area of psych that comes close is industrial organizational psychology. If you think you may want to pursue a PhD in human factors, there are many things you can do to give yourself sufficient foundation and also to make yourself more competitive for getting into a good PhD program. First, I would take an undergraduate course in human factors. This will help give you exposure to the field and may help you decide whether it's right for you. I realize, however, this won't be possible for a great many of you because human factors courses are relatively uncommon in psychology departments at the undergraduate level. Instead, you can focus on foundational courses that are also part of human factors. For example, take courses in industrial organizational psychology, sensation and perception, cognitive psychology, physiological psychology, and learning. In addition, it's important to focus on research methods and statistics. Take as many methods and statistics courses as you can 
and perform well in them. Human factors is a research-oriented discipline, and it's important to have as many research skills as possible. In addition, if possible, volunteer as an undergraduate research assistant for one of your professor's laboratories. This will give you additional research experience and help you gain more advanced research skills. Um, it may give you the opportunity to present at a conference or to even publish an abstract or a paper. Uh, both of these things will definitely give you a leg up on getting into graduate school. Uh, but in addition, it will give you a, the contact necessary for a good, detailed letter of recommendation from a faculty member. Letters of recommendation are important, and we review them very carefully. And generic letters uh, just don't cut it. You know, every semester I have a student come up to me asking for a letter of recommendation. It's not someone I necessarily know very well. Maybe they've had one or two classes with me. And uh, they never said anything in class. They, they never interacted with me other than this. And all I can really say in the letter is, so-and-so took my class, earned an A, and seems nice. That's not good enough. That's not competitive. You need letters that can speak to your work ethic, to your drive, to your reliability, to your intellect, um, to your character. All of these things are important. And you're not going to get this kind of a letter by being a passive uh, participant in your program. You need to be an active student in your classes, asking intelligent questions, showing interest. Uh, this is what will help make an impression upon your professors and help you get better letters. You can also become more active in your psychology department. Um, if you have a psychology club or a chapter of Psychi, get involved with them. Try to become an officer. Uh, this will offer additional opportunities for interacting with faculty and to make positive impressions that can carry you a long way and also help yield better letters of recommendation. In addition to the letters, certainly we do look at GRE scores and your GPA, not just your overall, but also in your major. So it's important to have as good a GPA and as good a GRE scores as is possible, because realize there are other applicants that are also going to have you know, a good GPA and good GRE scores. I can't give you specific figures because every program has their own criteria, but in general, higher is better. Well, I, I hope this advice has been helpful and I hope you take it to heart and I hope you seriously consider pursuing graduate study in human factor psychology. Thank you.